We've been growing our own corn for a few years now, making cornmeal, corn flour, and grits. Did you know over 90% of the corn grown in the United States is genetically modified? So if you're interested in growing your own food, being more sustainable, and eating clean, hey, you better buckle up, because we're fixing to show you how it's done. When you're making cornmeal, grits, or corn flour, you need to go field corn, not sweet corn. Sweet corn, we grow weeded in what we call the milking stage. Field corn, we let mature out on the stalk there and we let it dry. Then we harvest it as a hard grain. Now the type that I like to grow is heirlooms. I'm a big fan of heirloom field corns. To me, they just have a deeper, more complex flavor to them. Simply just taste better. And I think they're easier to grow. Heirlooms, in my humble opinion, are a lot less finicky than some of the new hybrids. They're more drought resistant, they're more insect resistant, and they're just easier to grow. So that's the reason I particularly like to grow heirloom corns. My two favorites is Jimmy Red and Hickory King. Now there's a lot more of them out there, but that just happens to be my two favorites. Now on field corn, I normally just grow one crop per year, unlike sweet corn. I can get a spring and a fall crop in on sweet corn. But field corn, I plant in spring after the danger of frost passes. And then I let it grow on out and let it dry on the stalk there. And then I harvest it, so one crop per year. I normally plant on 30 to 36 inch row spacing. And in my row spacing, Anywhere from 8 to 12 inches apart seems to be the ideal spacing there. Of course, I like to use drip tape because I can put that water right underneath the stalk there and my plants never stress. And corn, if you've never grown it before, it takes a lot of fertilizer, so you want to make sure that you keep those plants fed well. When do you harvest your field corn? Well, you want it to dry on the stalk as much as possible. Ideally, what you want is a 25% moisture level in that corn or less. Now, if you live in an agriculture area, your county extension office probably got one of those fancy machines that the commercial farmers use so it can measure the uh, moisture content in your corn and tell you exactly when to harvest. I don't have that luxury, so I kind of have to wing it. When my field corn dries out and some of the ears start turned upside down, for me, it's time to harvest. So I normally just pull it off the stalk at this point and I like to shuck mine when I'm in the patch here. This up to you whether you want to do it now or do it later. And you see there, I got a nice ear of corn. Now that ear of corn there needs to be 25% or less. So if it's not quite, quite dried out to what I think it should be, then I'm gonna lay it up on a rack somewhere and let it dry a little bit more. But that one looks pretty good. Now I've noticed with this Jimmy Red corn, the darker it is, the more dried out it seems to be. Now that's a pretty good ear of corn there. I always keep me two buckets here. And those two buckets I got right there is for good reason. If I'm going through there harvesting my corn and I run across one that the bugs have gotten into, that one there still looks pretty good, then I put it in my other bucket and you know what? I'm gonna use that for chicken feed so that nothing goes to waste. Now that one right there, I think the bugs have gotten in a little bit. See how it's, they've eaten, see the white part there? Sometimes the weevils will eat into it even more than that. When the, uh, the husk is kind of torn away there at the top, the insects might have got into it a little bit more. See the dusting in there? That tells me that the weevils are in there pretty good. So I may want to cull that one back to chicken food as well. I keep my best ears to grind for my cornmeal and my grits and my corn flour. Well, if you're having a wet year or you feel like your corn just ain't dried out enough yet for shelling, you can put it in a spot and let it dry out a little bit more. And that's what I do a lot of times. Now I use my greenhouse cause the greenhouse is an ideal place to do this cause it's out of the rain. I got good air circulation there and I still got that sunlight so I can dry the corn out. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can probably put it somewhere else like underneath your barn or wherever, but you gotta keep it out of the rain. You need that air circulation there. Now I like to husk mine before I let it dry out. Seems to work a lot better and it dries out a lot quicker. 
So I just leave it up here on the bench for a few days and let it continue on to dry out till I get ready to shell it. Now it's time to shell the corn. Well, years ago, I built this box and got this sheller here. The box works pretty good. Now I built this box out of reclaimed lumber. I probably wouldn't recommend using treated lumber, but I did use some old reclaimed lumber and I keep it out of the weather so it doesn't decay on me. My corn sheller right here, I bought that at a flea market in Cleveland, Georgia, probably 25 years ago. You can still find these things around in some rural areas at some flea markets or maybe on eBay and, uh, and, and find them in good working order. They are some new ones out there made in China that you can buy off of Amazon, I think. I don't have any experience with them. They look real similar to this one right here, but Lord have mercy. I don't know how old this one is, but it still works really good. I just try to keep it cleaned up a little bit and keep it out of the weather when not in use. But having it mounted on this box right here is really nice because it don't wiggle around or walk off on you. So as you can see right here, I notched in and I got this thing permanently mounted to this box. So that's the only thing I use this box for is to shell corn out. Now let's get at it. Now the way you know your corn's dry enough to shell is it gets with the shell off real easy. See how easy that comes off here? That tells me that corn is dry enough. If it didn't come off or it was a little bit spongy there and it just wanted to wiggle around, I knew that corn wasn't dry enough and I was gonna have to leave it for a few days and get some more moisture out of it. See how easy that shells? That's perfect right there. I just dumped my corn in the box there and put it in my shell and get started. Now this right here is called a corn injector right here. And after it gets through shelling that corn, it's supposed to throw that cob up here so it's easy to eject out. Now, in any of these old shellers here, it might not get at 100%, so sometimes if there's one or two left on there, I'll just take my hand and finish shelling it off. Take my cobs, throw them in the bucket. Here we go again. The sheller here has got a spring on there that you can tighten or you can loosen, and what that spring is for is to accommodate for different size cobs. See how the two different size cobs right there? Now, I normally don't adjust mine a lot, but if you run this small one through there, it might not shell as well. And they're gonna be a few of these right here you have to, may have to finish up hand shelling. See, it did a pretty good job, but there's a few, a few on there it didn't get. So there's a little debris left in there after we shell it, some leftover silks and stuff. And we're gonna use a fan to clean it up. So if you need to clean it again, you can simply just move your fan a little closer, get your get your wind a little stronger, but that looks pretty good right there. So we got a corn shelled. Now I like to store it in the whole kernel there instead of go ahead and grinding it up. I only grind it as I need it. Now we've got to store this in a way that the weevils won't get to it. Now the commercial farmers either spray it with a pesticide or either they fumigate it, but we don't have that luxury as being homesteaders. So a good solution that is, is I'm gonna put it in a pillowcase and I'm gonna put it in the freezer. And as I need it, I'm gonna pull it out and get out what I need. Well, 
Well, now we've showed you how to grow the field corn, to harvest it, to store it before we shell it, then we shell it and then we clean it. And we put it in that pillowcase and put it in the freezer so we can pull it out when we need to use it on demand. Now, I normally get all my food corn done first. And after I get through with shelling all my food corn, then I shell my corn that's gonna be used for animal feed, for chicken feed. And I got a big grinder out here in the barn, separate grinder I use for it to grind that animal feed up with. But this, feed, this corn that we use for food that we just put in the freezer, we're gonna take it out as we need it to grind it. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll show you how that's done.